Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the QNAP Photo Station application for mobile otherwise known as QPhoto. In today's video I am going to be going through some of the highlights and the lowlights of this application as I make my way through pretty much all of the common usage NAS mobile apps. We're utilizing a Google Pixel 2 XL. Um, it's Saturday the 23rd and let's get straight into this. So we're using the TS653D. Now for those that haven't already um, put their NAS on the network, it's very straightforward. You can just put in all the details there for your NAS, nice and easy to enter them there. Or you can scan your local area network with the plus symbol and it will find NASs on the LAN. Um, again, logging into it, pretty straightforward as an app. You sort of click in there. If you've already entered your login credentials, they'll all be uh, logging straight in. Otherwise, you will have to enter them. And the first thing you will see is the photo album. And that is the album that you pre-designated on your QNAP NAS with Multimedia Console. And it will immediately go into that shared usage view. We've got all those photos there. Can scroll nice and fast down as we can see as it generates those thumbnails nice and quick but of course we are utilizing this in a LAN environment so that has to be taken into account if we look at the average photo we're going to go for this random picture of my cat's bum um, we can see a bit more information there we can uh, you know play with some of the options that we've seen in the past if we go to the top there we can uh, go into the detail there we'll go into a little bit more information about the background there and if you go to the camera, you can find out a bit more information from the metadata there about the device that took it and more. There's even stuff uh, along the bottom. You can obviously rotate and do stuff like there, although rotating your phone manually will do that. Uh, you can do a, um, a slideshow of the album, but again, these are all fairly kind of Windows XP 2000 type options there. Um, you can share it to enable devices in the local area network using DLNA if you choose. And you can enable 360 mode if you choose, which again is this bizarre mode here. If you're using 3D glasses, you can use that to view the image. Or you can use 3D vision there with the two lenses. I know we're looking at this in vertical mode, but if you imagined this in horizontal, that would be to enable this photo in 3D. That symbol there being a Google Cardboard. So that's kind of an idea of what you can do. You can scroll through pictures pretty quickly there. And again, nice response time, got to give it that. And if we come out of there, again, you can pretty much go for any picture. Straight away, stop. We'll go for that random picture of me there. Uh, I believe in a Trabant. Go there, find information, detail. It's one of the ones, uh, I believe, from Berlin a little while ago. And bang, nice and easy. A lot of the metadata gets scraped. So that's kind of what I would expect, at least on the bare minimum, of a photo app in 2021. Now, if we go into some of the other options, for a start, what we can do is take a picture live from our camera. So if we go into there, we can go to multimedia pictures there, and we can upload pictures from our camera if we so choose. And these are the pictures from those multimedia albums. And again, those are ones that are pre-designated to the NAS, because that's in the shared photo area, and then we can carry it over to the phone. If we go to the folder view, we can break down into the folder structure of our NAS. And of course, in the photo station options, you can enable or disable certain um, trees or photos. So if you want to go for a more breadcrumb approach, you can go straight into there and browse through them. And once again, you can just go straight ahead and find out all the detail there in the background if you so choose. Again, nice and simple, quite straightforward there. And again, if we go back into that main menu, it's worth highlighting that there are some extra options as well. Now, one of my first early gripes about this application, I've got to say, is the lack of um, immediate upload there in the background. Now, for those of you that have been moving over from the likes of Google Photos or you're using some of uh, the Synology apps, you may be disappointed to hear that there isn't actually an auto-upload option when taking pictures. You can go into your library of pictures there such as the ones that are currently on my phone there here's some offices that I visited uh, recently you can have a look at a photo there and again this is on my phone so a lot of the information is already readily available what I can do then is upload this directly to the NAS if I choose so I can share the file copy to the NAS and again nice and simple I can choose an album that I'll put it into just the general directory and that's just going to upload it in the background there you go boom again fairly standard but what you would want to do is to be able to upload those photos automatically to the NAS. The idea that you would have to 
have to manually do that in the past tense is less desirable. Moreover, there's the options there all the way through to take pictures and directly upload them or uh, use some of the migrated data between the other popular application, QMaggie. Now, QMaggie with its facial recognition, I'm pleased to say they have enabled that the photo uh, recognition has been carried over. So these are tags that we applied in QMaggie in a previous video. And as you can see, now all of that facial recognition has been pulled over nice and straightforwardly there. And again, nice fast response time there, I'm pleased to say as well. And all of the information can be shared in the same way, can be searched for tags and names. There's lots of options really available. Um, now, if we go towards the bottom, we can look at some of the settings options of this app. And again, that signing with QID there, that's if you're going to link this app with your NAS via the internet, not the network. Advisable if you're going to be using this in a long distance capacity rather than just low over the network. And again, you can limit folder speed, uh, folder size and stuff like that. And the cache used by the phone, you can clear that cache if you choose. Um, auto login, standard options there about whether you want to use uh, when browsing photos, thumbnails to original size to save a bit of data there in the background. And again, that 360 button, although not a lot of people are going to use it, I'm going to leave it enabled for now. Again, the sort of standard options I would uh, expect from a photo application, but it has to be said, even with a number of these options, it's still a little low frills uh, um, in terms of its UI. I definitely prefer the kind of slick UI that QMaggie features. And even though this does do the job, it does lack some of that instantaneous upload uh, and features and functionality that are available in some of the other kind of applications, not only from QNAP, but on the market as well. They're definitely leaps ahead of the likes of Acer Store and TerraMaster, but I would be remiss to say that I think this application is as good as it gets in terms of photos on a NAS. Now, Again, going into that shared fo folder there, we can split between photos and video, but that's really about your lot there of what you can do with this application. And I do think as far as photo apps go, um, this has been overshadowed in a big way by what we've seen in QMaggie with that AI smart recognition. There are little things that have been built into it, like this time lapse and burst stuff, but the, you know, the most useful fe features and functions are ones that are already pre-existing in QMaggy or are ones that, you know, are just not that desirable for many of us. I mean, again, you've got view modes where you can go into timelines and lists and stuff like that. So you can break it down a little bit more. But mm, I just feel like this, this app could be so much more. Um, in our next uh, quick mobile app overview, we are going to be looking of course, at QMaggie, as alluded to several times, and hopefully it will show you some of the reasons why I think that app is definitely the winner of those two. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you haven't subscribed to learn more, and I will see you next time.